to be able to address this issue. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, uh, yesterday, uh, even as we went through with the board and we um, provided stipends for um, bus drivers and mechanics and those things, uh, there's still been, um, as you can imagine, challenges. Uh, this morning, um, we've been up uh, almost at 4 a.m. this morning, and uh, as we started to see bus, uh, as we started to monitor how many bus drivers would come in, um, we started to see that uh, we did not have as many bus operators coming to pick up kids, and so we had to make the decision this morning to kind of delay and then also make changes at the end of the day for kids to, um, uh, to go home early. Um, we're still working through some of those issues, um, but we, we believe we're getting closer and closer to a plan on trying to you know, solve the transportation issue, but we wanted to uh, apologize to families about that. So what time did the call-ins start happening? Yeah, so bus drivers arrive in their job about 4.30 in the morning, and then you know, we start to just monitor how many bus drivers come in, because they're usually on the road about 5.20, 5.30, you know, as they start getting up their, their pickups. And uh, we started to see that that became, uh, there wasn't enough operators coming in. Uh, and so we made the call about around 6 a.m. And so we have to start making some changes. So we've had a lot of questions asking, like, why would, was there not a robocall or the mass text messages? They've had some issues with the apps as well. Yeah. You know, what was the issue with getting the message out to parents? Yeah, so usually when we do our process of messages, we don't always send it out through central office. We think it's better to send it out through the school themselves. Um, and because it's just sometimes it's easier that a, you know, a parent will communicate directly with principals and schools first, and so that was our strategy. But uh, today I met with all the principals in the school system to debrief about this morning around the process, and uh, they said that you know, they'd like for us to make some of those shifts, and so we're going to make the shift that we'll send an all-out robocall um, and also start to try to make sure there's another process to communicate. So the school leaders helped us figure out some of that this morning. Looking at kind of the big picture here, the school bus driver shortage isn't a new thing. The issues with the mechanics and the number of buses and the breakdowns, these aren't new issues. It seems like this kind of snuck up on everybody. How did that happen? Yeah, unfortunately, um, uh, you know, after everything went through last night, it seemed that, you know, there was, uh, you know, there was, um, looks like bus operators were, uh, or certain folks were not very happy about um, the issue with the salary and that. And so, you know, they, they made different sets of decisions. And so uh, I actually have an emergency meeting I'm gonna have with bus drivers on Monday to actually have a conversation with them just so we can kind of get us to a better place so we can, uh, you know, move it forward. Um, it's important that we are able to get the school up and running. But surely this wasn't the first time that bus drivers have complained about the salary. This, is a, this isn't a new thing. No, it's not the first time. But, you know, the reality is, you know, um, the board has their fiduciary responsibility to make decisions, um, to make sure that they're making decisions that puts us in a very good um, place as a school district. Um, I always give them a recommendation, and then they, they go from there. Um, you know, we gave... Uh, when you look at the total amount of how much uh, bus operators McCann's got was about $12,500, which is huge. And I know sometimes people get concerned between a stipend and also a salary, but, you know, the long-term goal is to de get to a salary, but to, to just say we're going to give you a salary, you just can't do it that way. You, it's, it's much more complex than that. But when you calculate the amount that they were given uh, by the board for a stipend, and you look at how much that is uh, connected to the their current amount, it's a very huge jump. Dr. Narcisse, yes. was your recommendation was the 5,000 stipend in the board ended up with the 9,500 stipend last night. Mm -hmm. Did you ever consider that making part of that maybe a pay raise? Like, because that, that's an idea that got floated during the budget process. What were the pros and cons of that? Yeah, I mean, our, we know we have 6,000 employees in multiple different groups. And you know, when you do for one, you got to think about everybody. And what we what we have thought through strategically is that we want to make sure that we're being fair across the board. And um, it's better to prepare for that over a uh, three-year runway to be much more um, efficient in that way, and also you know to make sure that you're using your dollars in the most best way versus saying automatically I'm just going to give this to you. And so the conversation was, you know, how do we keep them, these other employees, in the same trajectory as our teachers. 
I know sometimes people say, well, the teachers, teachers are the most important, but the reality is everybody's important. Sure. Uh, if you ask me from my perspective, the bus driver is just as important as the teacher, as the counselor, as, you know, and I know we, we say that a lot, but the reality is we actually need everybody to do that. And so it's a matter of us being able to understand that context. But you don't have quite the same crisis level in your other job categories right now. Doesn't that call for special? I mean, obviously the money is bigger, yeah. but you know that that whole issue of the pay raise seemed to be a bit sticky. Yeah, I mean, just because you throw money at the problem doesn't mean it's going to get fixed, right? We sure. still have we have 161 vacancies. We still have buses that were breaking down. You know, for us, we want our employees to feel valued, and we want them to. Um, work with us and be a part of our system. You know, we I don't do this by myself. No one does anything in this school system by themselves. It takes kind of a village approach. And so our, our goal is to, you know, we're going to make sure that people are going to be taken care of, but we have to do it in a thoughtful way. And I think that that's really important. You said a three-year run-up for something like this. Are we, are we going to have to go through this for the next two years? Yeah, you know the, you know, I don't want to, you know, pre-predict. I mean, the for approvals is always, you know, I make a recommendation and the board decides on that. But, you know, if we go as we think about, you know, uh, about salaries and those things, we want to be able to match up where that component can happen over time, right? And so right now, as you notice, the proposal we had when it came to teachers is that we were going to give them year one a stipend, year two a stipend, and year three a salary, and so. The question is, you know, if the board decides for us to be able to do that, my recommendation would be if we're making those raises, we want to do that across the board for people so we have a better runway to plan and decide efficiently, you know, how we use our dollars. Dr. Narcisse, about how many schools were impacted today? Yeah, so um, we had a number of schools that were impacted, specifically out in the Woodlawn area. I think at, when I got the call at around 6A, well, I, I had a couple of conversations when they started to see the number at about 4.30 in the morning, and they watched at 5, and then I started to see, when we started getting closer to 6, I think we had, you know, it was over 20 semi uh, bus drivers going down, so we knew that the problem was going to be exacerbated. Um, so, you know, by 6 a.m., we said we're going to start making a shift. Usually in my process, uh, when we are... Um, looking at making calls for whether you're uh, for transportation I'm actually looking at data so uh, you know we have a total of about 375 uh, bus drivers in our fleet our average on a day is at times you know you can have uh, between 315 to 300 bus drivers that are driving you're pretty okay to cover a lot of routes but when you start getting below 200 and lower numbers, then you gotta start thinking about closing schools, right? And I, you know, I told uh, folks that you know, I, you know, it's important for me that children stay in school. Um, every day that we don't have them in school is not a good day, regardless of how we feel about things. And so we, when we got to this morning's number, I said, okay, let's try to see uh, how we can kind of mitigate that and, and try to start communicating out. Um, and, and the reality is we could do a much, much better job around communication. And, and then, so that's why today when we debrief with all the, uh, we debrief with, I talk with almost all the principals uh, in the city this afternoon, and then also our team up here, and we said we're going to have a better process for that. And um, they felt pretty good about that. All right. And, um, you know, football season is starting in a yeah. week or two. Um, will bus drivers not run these extra routes like football games uh, if so what is the backup plan for all the games this season and how the players are going to be transported yeah football is a little bit different when you got to run the entire school system um, with thousands of kids and so uh, um, we're right now working through a plan we don't anticipate that um, uh, the football will be the biggest challenge um, or any of the sports um, after school uh, but it's during the day you're going to have a larger volume of kids going to school and so um, we actually are going to be looking at bringing a different plan to the board um, that we'd like to talk through. Uh, yesterday we did talk to the board a little bit about a transportation plan. Uh, the board told me to continue to be more innovative about that and I think that you know, um, you know uh, the next plan I'm going to bring will be a little bit more um, uh, a little more flexible around that plan and we want to look at you know, different set of ways that we, with our current existing fleet, to cover all the kids. And so, um, you know, but we're going to try to work through that within the next couple of days and, and then have conversations with the board. I got one more for you. Um, 
when will the drivers receive the stipends? Is it going to be all at once or split up? And um, will new drivers also get the stipend? Yeah, so, um, so yes, there are actual days. I believe the, uh, the first day was in October. Um, and there's another one, um, I can't remember the other March. day, March. In October and March, they'll receive the stipend. And yes, if uh, drivers come on board, they will be eligible for that. We also tell folks if there's anybody that has a CDL license, uh, please come on board. We want to get you on, on um, here. We've, uh, we've also reached out, you know, to, um, uh, I reached out to the governor's office to ask for some, uh, for some help as well. Uh, we've been doing that to try to see how he can help and with the military. They've been, uh, you know, gracious to help us think through our problems. They were here collecting information, and uh, we are, and we also connected also with other um, districts that are large like us um, to kind of talk to their folks around um, how we can deal with the complexity. Thank you. You mentioned that you're meeting with bus drivers on Monday. Do you anticipate any uh, transportation issues on Monday? Yeah, so so right now, you know, because of how things are contentious, I believe that uh, we won't do a two-hour delay. We'll do regular school day, but we, we are most likely, uh, we were just talking about that, are going to run the same schedule today where we're going to allow high schools to get out at 125, and then elementary schools will stay till their 325 time. So the start time would be the same, but the end time would be different? That is correct. All right. And so when you, how are you? When do you plan to communicate all that to parents about Monday? Yeah, so uh, we're going to have that conversation by the end of today. Uh, they're still running the numbers. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we're, you know, looking at data to be able to do that. Um, I don't like to just make random decisions. So, and so this sounds like it's going to be earlier in the weekend. Yeah, well, well, our well, our goal morning. is if uh, our goal is to uh, we'd like to do it actually, you know, by today or tomorrow. Today but, or tomorrow. but yeah, so but parents should be on the lookout for something. That is correct. Yes. All right. What about later in the week? Is that going to be a day-to-day -day sort of determination? Yes, it's going to be a day-to-day. -a -day. Um, it'll all come down to the numbers. We we um, we believe that by uh, you know Monday and Tuesday, we think it should level off. Um, I know because of the conversations that happened yesterday, it was a little more intense, and so. Um, but um, I'm, you know, with our conversation that we have, I'll have with the bus drivers and those days, we just got to make sure that they feel valued, and that, you know, we do value them. And so that's uh, important for them to know that. You mentioned a plan that you're developing, and you're going to be talking to bus drivers. Do you anticipate that maybe you'll have to bring back to the board like a special meeting for more things to try to deal with these problems in the near term? Yeah, I, I, I see myself bringing back something uh, to help the, a different way for us to think about transportation. Um, we may need to explore some things like different start times uh, based on what our current population number is. Um, I actually have them looking at the data metrics now for that. Um, I think that um, with the current number of fleet we have, the average number that comes in, we'll have to look at some of that. Uh, but you know, I'll need to talk to the board about that. If if we go down that road, um, I'll talk to you know the president of the board and. And board members around, you know, seeing if we can uh, bring it, bring that to the table. That in the near future. Yeah. Yes, but that this, you know, we're trying to right now explore all the possibilities. Sure. I think uh, right now we, you know, uh, we're going to get this fixed. Uh, but my axe to the community is some grace on trying to get it fixed. Uh, we've been up all day, all night trying to problem solve, and we all have so much, only so much personnel. Uh, but I think that we're going to have a path where we're getting closer to solving uh, some of these issues. Bus routes, you mentioned last night that they're probably going to be new bus route cards sent to parents at some point, like the, oh, the week of the 28th or something, there was going to be new routes. Yeah, so yeah, so they're working through routes right now. Um, what we ended up doing was we had um, uh, um, principal supervisors go into schools to work with principals to find out who was riding a bus and who was not. So if you're riding a bus, it was yes. If you're not riding a bus, no, because we did not have the right number for the ridership. Uh, when we had the process of <clears throat> of getting parents to opt in uh, into the ridership, the numbers were low, and so because we didn't have an accurate number, the problem was you couldn't route for the 
a right amount of students and you know we have more than 6,000 kids in the school system that rides a bus um, and so we're trying to kind of problem solve through that but we, we believe that if we could start being a little more flexible around certain things that, that could be helpful so my my goal is if we are able to have a different plan that we'll bring to the board um, uh, around a, a different way of looking at transportation then we can kind of work through a runway with parents and say we're going to make a shift. So that sounds like it's a little bit up in the air when those, you're going to make those route decisions and when you're going to convey that to parents. But there's going to be a new round of bus car, like route cards at some point in the near future. Yes, yes. We, we are. Gonna, our goal is to have new cards. Um, we want to move from instead of the old cards, which uh, if you listen to some families, they said it was not as effective. We like to use stuff that actually has the name of the school on it. And so, like, you know, when a child's taking a bus, they, it, they'll have a placard on the bus that says, you know, this is for McKinley High School, or this is for BRCVPA, or this is for Woodlawn High School. And I think that's going to be more helpful. So when they drive in those neighborhoods, there's no question about where that bus is going to go. And it's going to be a route number, right, but not a bus number per se, because the buses may change. That is correct. The other part we're thinking too is like we wanted to create a system where a parent can go to a board and be able to track and see um, uh, where kids are going to go. Um, so we're trying to figure out how to simplify uh, the process, uh, but also create time for kids to be able to travel. Um, with our current fleet number, um, there's no way that we can have everybody doing everything at the same time. Um, and uh, because of the amount of numbers that we have uh, in terms of elementary routes compared to middle and high school, that's where the complexity is. Are you planning new communications regarding the extended day? I know the board passed some stuff last night. What's the timeline of what yeah, so about that? So today I asked, um, I met with all of the high school principals, middle school principals, and elementary principals. Uh, and uh, I spoke this morning with elementary principals. Uh, we have some thoughts about what we want to do, but I always like to work with uh, folks who are closer to the problem than myself. So um, uh, we're going to have a meeting actually on Monday with all the elementary school principals around how they want to go about it. What I did say to them is if you decide that you want to start um, uh, as we kind of work through the plan, uh, go ahead and allow those teachers to go ahead and start collect their names and then we will you know uh, retroactively uh, pay them their stipend. So there's going to be some school level schools that may go that route and will communicate to their parents about them. That is correct. I didn't know if there was going to be an all like hey here's the schedule of what this is going to happen. So going to be a couple yeah. of Yeah so we are going to communicate to families around that process but because um, you know some schools families are already dropping kids off early. We told those schools, go ahead, uh, allow the kid to come in. Yeah, they said they can find some of their own folks to do it. And I said, just take their name. So and be early next week. Yeah, it will be early next week. So our so goal. Additional extended day before mm -hmm. after. That's correct. What we, want, what we want to do is make sure that we work through with the school leaders and some of the administrators. Sure to, right, right, And also the implementation. Uh, they have to be a part of helping us to implement because they're on the ground every day actually doing the implementation of the work. So um, I spoke to some bus drivers last night, and a lot of them were telling me that they were unhappy. You know, they some don't even feel like like y'all are treating them like human. You know, yeah. um, so as he mentioned, you're aware that they wanted a salary, not a stipend, which is basically why they're on sick out. Um, what do you have to say to the bus drivers who are feeling hurt and unseen right now? Yeah, you know, I mean, when I heard that. Um uh, yesterday, I, you know, I, I said, you know, it's it's tough to for people to feel that they're not valued, and I said we have to do a better job to help them feel valued in our system. Uh, one way is to, uh, you know, be able to pay them, but the other part is to make them feel that they're a part of the culture, right? Um, and at times, as we, what has been very challenging, as you go through so much change and you have all these different sets of pressure that you go through. Um, it becomes, uh, you know, it becomes complex, right? And the the problem that we've had is we've had to be responsive, and we haven't been as proactive with the plan, and that's why we need to be much more proactive, and also bring them into uh, talking with them about strategy. I mean, uh, some of the folks that came up last night, we were they were with us. Some of the head um, uh, transportation folks were with us when we were talking to the governor's office on trying to problem solve. Uh, because the, the, the problem is so complex, 
uh, you know, you, and you're trying to respond to it so quickly, you know, you're trying to figure out ways to kind of mitigate uh, some of the challenges. Dr. Francis, I, I apologize if this is kind of a, a sore spot, but it's been suggested, and you mentioned that this is a complex problem, trying to solve it quickly, but this is a problem that's been building over the years. Mm -hmm. It's been suggested with your job search over the summer, have you been a little distracted? Uh, no, I wouldn't say I, I have not been distracted since I've been back. I've been trying to get us to work through with schools. I mean, uh, you know, transportation is one part of the entire school system. You know, we have kids that have their materials. Kids were in school. When you, if you actually go to our schools, there's great learning happening. Things are going well. We just, you know, we just didn't put enough um, intentionality on the transportation piece. And what we've been able to get away with over the years I would argue is exacerbated. And what I mean by that, if you look at, you know, we haven't ordered new buses since 2016. When we order buses, we did it only through grants. Um, we haven't uh, thought about our fleets. When you look at the number of bus drivers that decrease, you know, a lot of that and happened before, you know, uh, when you look at, you know, we've had different events from the flood to the hurricane. I mean, so, you know, we just haven't done the best job operationally. And when I came here, uh, when we did a transition report, my focus was so much on the academic side of the house because I was like, we got to get more kids to read. That I would, I would always say that we could have done a much better job on the operational side, at least the the bus transportation component of it. Um, and we also have to do upgrades with some of our systems. We have some antiquated systems, so we haven't done the best in that area. Um, the reality is, you know, I, I don't like to make excuses or blame folks. You know, it is under my watch, and so we're going to get it fixed. And I told, you know, we've been up a number of hours uh, trying to just problem solve, and every day has been getting better, but we want to figure out ways to accelerate. Uh, as we were talking yesterday to uh, some of the, um, the governor's folks uh, um, who came down, we said, you know, we want to figure out what are some ways that we can kind of move some things faster uh, to problem solve. You know, we, we had some challenges with the software, you know, and so how do you, you know, figure that out? And then we've also had conversations with some of our peer districts. We've been talking to other large parishes to just double check if we've done all the right things. And so, uh, because, you know, we all kind of sometimes work and collaborate together on practices. And so, um, you know, it's, it, we just got to work through it. And so uh, we're going to get it fixed and we're going to get it done. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys coming and uh, uh, look forward to keep working. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Got to work for Rick. Am I supposed to do the obligatory? Press guy, thank you all.